Okay, workshop vlog number 17. It is Saturday morning on the 27th of March 2021 and we have a competition winner to pick in this vlog. We have some of these fantastic Sauter parallel jaw clamps or body clamps to give away. So without further ado, let's jump in and do it. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, like I said, this is workshop vlog number 17. Just use these vlogs as a quick opportunity to check in with you guys, see how you're all doing, share what's going on in the workshop, a few upcoming plans and stuff like that. This one's gonna be nice and short and sweet. Don't have too much to get through in this one. And I know you're all anxious to know who exactly won the clamps. So we will use a random YouTube comment picture in this video to go and pick one of those uh, pick a winner for those clamps shortly. But uh, for now, I'll give you some updates on what's going on in the workshop on some future plans to get your opinion on something. We have a few questions to answer about the Bosch track saw on the Festool rail, a few things that I want to address, a few issues or a few questions that you guys had that popped up in that video. So we'll address some of those in this video as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. So like I said, it is Saturday, the 27th of March, 2021. We are still in full lockdown here in Ireland. It has gone on now for five months. It's no end in sight. I'm losing my mind. I need a holiday. I would love just a weekend away anywhere. I'd sleep in a field if I could just get five kilometers from my house and do it. That's how I am at the minute. So wherever you are in the world, guys, I hope you guys are getting through it. I hope things are improving wherever you are. It's not too bad here. It's just the lockdown is, uh, yeah, I'm losing my mind. Anyway, enough of that stuff. Let's get on and see what's going on in the workshop. Okay, first thing I'll address is what's going on on the workbench here. So I'm in the middle of a project, again, completely done with hand tools. I'm starting uh, Matt Hesley's a toolbox build. So I had some of that water damaged maple. I've made a few projects with that. Some of you guys would have seen it. And uh, the boards were wide enough so I didn't have to actually glue anything together and I could actually get the toolbox out of the boards. So they have some water marks in it which runs all around the box which should be quite nice because maple can be quite plain. But I'm doing that. Now again, I won't be filming this like the, the cabinet build. This is just uh, for me to practice my uh, woodworking skills. So one thing about making YouTube videos is that usually when I'm down here I don't get to spend much time uh, developing my own skills because I'm always making a video or something in the workshop. So it's nice just to be able to do something that I can do off camera, spend a bit of time, practice and try and develop some of my own skills as well because that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm an electrician after all, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a furniture maker, I'm not a cabinet maker, I'm just a spoofer in a workshop. Um, I know a bit about electrics, I don't know a whole lot about woodworking. I know a bit about woodworking but uh, it's nice to be able to in and practice some stuff. So I'm actually doing Matt Hesley's tool cabinet. He's actually started a whole build series on his free online woodworking school again. I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy building the projects because you know you can learn a lot from it and uh, I get to develop my skills as well. So I'm looking forward to putting a lock into this box. I've never put a key and a lock in a woodworking project before, so that's something new. The dovetailing and stuff, I'm pretty okay with, so I don't have to worry too much about that. There's a few rebates and stuff, which will be simple enough. A few mitre dovetails, I've done mitre dovetails before, so that's not an issue for me. But uh, I'm looking forward to fitting the hinges. I'm looking forward to cutting the lid off the box because <laughs> I always uh, kind of panic when it comes to the stage. You've built a beautiful box, and then you have to run it through a bandsaw or over a router table, and if it goes wrong at that stage, then all the hard work is kind of ruined so I always sweat and start to shake when it comes to that stage so Matt done this one with his router table I've not cut a lid off the box of the router table before so I'm going to try it hopefully it all goes well but I'll show you the finished product anyway that's enough about that that's what's going on on the table here it's a complete hand tool build that I'm kind of doing for myself to practice some skills with now let's get over to the MFT table I have some questions to answer over there Okay, over at the MFT table. Now, the previous video brought up some questions that came up in the comments question, and I got some messages and stuff about it. Uh, one was about the sacrificial strip, a couple were about the Bosch track saw on the Festool rail. So that was the previous video, me using my Bosch track saw on a Festool rail, trying to solve some of the issues that you end up getting with the Bosch track saw using it with the MFT table. It doesn't really work uh, because the track saw hits the dogs, I won't get into that, it's all there in the video. So one of the main sets of questions I got was about the sacrificial strip. Why do you need it? What's the point of it? Uh, is it useless? Is it over engineering? Is it all these questions? Well, 
The primary use of the sacrificial strip is that you cut into the strip rather than cutting into the top. It's far easier to replace the strip than it is to replace the top. Second issue was asked, why don't you just leave a gap in your table? Well, the whole point of the sacrificial strip or cutting into your tabletop for that matter is that the cut is supported all the way along its length. So it essentially acts as a zero clearance insert that you would put into maybe a table saw or into a miter saw. Like I say, it supports the cut the whole way and stops tear out splintering or fraying of the edges. It gives you a nice clean cut. So that's why I don't have a gap in the table and I have a sacrificial strip. Now another question that was brought up was, well, aren't you always going to be cutting in the exact same place? So why bother with the sacrificial strip if the track always goes against the dogs? you will always be cutting in the same place. Well, that's not actually the case. So here is my previous sacrificial strip and it is completely chewed up all the way across its width. And the reason for that is you don't always use the dog system. Sometimes you can just come along, get your piece, throw your track on top of it and just run a cut nice and quick across it. You're not trying to be 100% accurate or you don't need a dog. So you have a line marked on this. You're not cutting exactly square or 45 and you want to just get an angle cut into your piece and you can just throw it on top of your sacrificial strip. You don't have to think about it. Just run your tracks over, cut it, get all your cuts done. I did that recently when I was making um, a shelving system for the back of my van. Just nice, quick, simple, throwing it together. Took me a couple of hours, chopped it all up on the MFT table, didn't use a dog system, and just ran multiple cuts over my sacrificial strip. I didn't have to think about it. So it's not actually the case that all your cuts will always be in that same one line on your table. And especially if you're breaking down an eight by four sheet, this table is an eight by four top. So a full sheet is not gonna work with the dog system. You can throw your sheet up on this table, throw your track across it, and just run cuts through it once the cut is lined up somewhere within your sacrificial strip. So actually having a nice wide sacrificial strip is even more beneficial. So that's, well, hopefully that answers some of your questions. That's why the sacrificial strip, and like I said, it's far easier for me to replace this one little strip than it is to replace the whole top. So that's why the sacrificial strip, hopefully that answers some of your questions that you guys had. And that's why not a gap, that's why the strip, the cuts aren't always in the same groove. And uh, yeah, there we go, that's one question answered. Then we have a few more to get through. Okay, in for a bit of a closer look. Now, another bunch of questions that were asked, I'd like to address this as well, is can I not build something to offset the Bosch track off the rails? Now look, let's go through this problem one more time. So if I wanted to cut a square cut on this sheet, if I wanted to set up, say my tracks there, and run my tracks all over it, you can see I can't. I can't actually move the saw up and down. It's, it's hitting the dogs. Now, the, so the question was asked, why can't you make something to offset the uh, Bosch track? Well, see, the problem is, is the Bosch track saw overhangs its rails. So no matter what I put on, so I have a fence here that I've made. This is one idea I had myself. I can put that in there. Why can't I put my track there and do that? You can't do that either because the saw always overhangs the rails, as you can see. So the saw is about three millimeters over the edge of this rail. So no matter what I build, I can't get it against the straight edge of the rail because the saw overhangs it. So building stuff like this, although yes, in theory, that would have been a fantastic idea. In theory, um, you cannot then use it because, like I say, the saw makes contact with anything you put out to the side of the rail. It's not the straight edge of the rail that um, you're using to make contact. And if you're not doing that, then you can't guarantee accuracy. And even if you could, you've just added more components to the MFT table. The whole purpose of an MFT table is that it's the speed and accuracy. That's its, that's its key function. If you lose any of the two of those, then there's no point in having an MFT table. It's not doing what it's supposed to do for you. The beauty of an MFT table is it's so quick and so easy to set something up and run multiple cuts um, at good square straight edges. Without that, like I say, the table begins to break down. So adding in pieces, adding in extra pieces for jigs adds potential for discrepancy. And again, anything we put there, it's not gonna work with the Bosch rail because the Bosch saw overhangs the rail. So you can't actually make contact with 
the real. So that's the problem. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. It's not going to work. Um, I had thought about it. And again, the less things we add to this table, the better, the quicker we can set it up, the better. That's the whole point of the MFT table. And if we begin to lose either of the two of those, either the speed of setup or the accuracy, then the whole table is a waste of time. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay, another issue that we have to address, and one of the eagle-eyed amongst you, and there's always eagle-eyed viewers watching my channel, you actually spot things that I miss, and this was very well spotted. So, place the Bosch track saw on the Fest Tool rail. Now, you can see there's two green sliders on the Fest Tool rail. They're just low friction strips to help the saw glide. But as you can see, the Bosch saw is sitting on one of the strips and not on the other. So the question was asked, is this tilting the, slot, the saw um, a half a degree or a degree out of square and uh, yeah that gave me pause for thought because it was something that I did not notice. Now the Bosch track saw is making contact with the rail here, here, here and it seems to be making good contact here. The sliders are slightly proud of the rail so this could be an issue and if this turns out to be an issue well then that gets rid of my using the Bosch tracks ever again or if it becomes a real headache, then I'm just going to get rid of this Bosch saw and I'm going to uh, just invest in the Festool system because it would be, it's just too much chopping and changing at this stage. In other words, if I have to go into setting up this Bosch saw for the Festool rail and then resetting it up every time I want to go on to do the uh, Bosch rail, then that's a disaster. I already have to do that with the adjusters for tightening onto the track. You tighten onto the Festool rail, it'll no longer fit on the Bosch rails. If you then have to reset the zero stops, um, so that you can use it with the Festool rail or the Bosch rail every single time, then that is just, it's a non-runner. It's just, it would be crazy to try and do that. So I want to test this now. I've, these are, this is a sheet that I've cut already. I've tested these cuts. They seem to be pretty square, but this is 12 mil material. I want to cut a piece of inch material. I have zeroed this, I have set this Bosch saw up already. There was issues with this Bosch saw cutting square. I've set the stops on it. It should be cutting square, but now if it's sitting on this Festool rail and it's a degree or two out or even a half a degree out, then I have to reset it up again. And uh, yeah, this could be become a headache. So well spotted. Let's cut a piece of inch material and see how square it is and hopefully it's okay. Okay, here's an off cut of one inch MDF. I'm just going to use this to put a cut on it and it might give me a little bit more of an idea of how accurately we are cutting. So whether we're going to be 90 degrees to our face. So I'm just going to run a quick cut over this and you can see this is why another reason why uh, the sacrificial strip if I'm doing small cuts like this and I'm not using the dog system then I can just lie this anywhere in my sacrificial strip and cut away and not have to worry it doesn't even have to be at a straight angles with the um, actual MFT table itself I can be slightly off it doesn't matter it's a sacrificial strip that's why the sacrificial strip okay so we want to get um, cut into this now so uh, and then we check it with, with uh, engineer square Okay guys, so there is our piece of one inch MDF. We just put our square on it. You can see that we are good. So hopefully that answers that question. It does for me. That's a good square cut. I can't see any daylight in there. We just check with the other engineer square. Same thing, look, we have a good, as far as I can see, and hopefully these squares are square and they should be. That is pretty square, no daylight to be seen anywhere there. So hopefully that answers that question about the Bosch track saw not running on both of the green sliders. Once it's set up to be cut square, it's square on the Bosch track and it's also square on the Festival track. So there's another question hopefully addressed. Okay, so hopefully that just addresses some of the questions that the previous video threw up. That kind of... Um, addresses everything I think that some of the main questions that I was getting and it kind of sets my mind at ease 
um, at the Bosch track, so it's not riding on both of the green sliders, but it's still cutting square, which is important. Actually, it's very important because if that wasn't the case, then again, the MFT table becomes useless. So there we go. Or if you had to re keep readjusting the saw, then it would just be too much of a faff. And I am one, I'm about at this stage, I'm about one more problem away from uh, just getting rid of the Bosch saw and just getting the Festool system to work with the MFT table because I'm actually really surprised since I've built this just how much I use this table and that track saw. I use it since I've got it. It's probably my most used uh, woodworking machine tool or power tool that's in this shop now. It's just great for doing so much stuff. Uh, little projects it's great for. So like I say, it gets used a lot and if it's not, if you're, we're not getting speed and accuracy from the MFT table, then it's just pointless. And uh, like I say, I'm one more problem away from just investing in the festival. So that's where I'm at. So again, hopefully that answers all your questions and you can see these workshop vlogs. What I'm actually gonna use these for going forward is at the end of every month, do a vlog and address the questions that might have been raised in the previous videos for that month. So there we go, guys. On to the next one. Okay, so on to the next order of business. Now I wanna do a quick little shout out here. I don't normally do shout outs, but there's a fellow Irish woodworker. He's on Instagram, he's Era Workshop. Uh, Tommy is his name. He's an actual real proper woodworker. He has got a beautiful setup in his workshop. He really knows what he's doing. And uh, he posted his very first YouTube video last night. So I said I'd give him a shout out and help out a fellow woodworker and fellow YouTuber um, just to give him a bit of exposure. Now bear in mind, it's his very, very first YouTube video that he's ever made. He's not up with all the camera gear and stuff like that. So the quality of the video is not great, but what he's actually doing in the video is actually fantastic. He's made some self cleaning blast gates and he's made all the jigs associated with it. Really knows what he's at. Um, and his video editing will improve, I have no doubt, as he goes on. So I just said I'd give him a quick shout out. That's Era Workshop. I'll give it a link below. Go over, have a look. You would be really impressed with the blast gates. You'd be really impressed with his methods and the jigs that he made so that you can turn out multiple blast gates. I know I thought it was absolutely fantastic and I have no doubt that his editing skills and his video skills will improve. So quick shout out to Tommy at Aero Workshop. Uh, definitely go check him out guys. Now, addressing camera issues and stuff like that, one of the comments I have been getting is that some of my videos are getting a little bit fuzzy or hazy and stuff like that. Um, I do intend on upgrading my camera equipment this year. That's one of my biggest goals for this year is to get better equipment. I'm on a relatively inexpensive uh, DSLR Canon camera. For the most part, the video quality is quite good. It's the kit lens as well. Camera equipment is very, very expensive, so it's a big investment to kind of get up to the next level, but I do intend on making it. The camera does struggle with certain light conditions. I have skylights in the shop, so you can probably see in this video it's getting brighter and darker. There's clouds are passing over, the sun is going in and out, and uh, certain light conditions it struggles. It really struggles with white balance when I'm trying to show you green on stuff like maple and stuff, it's hard to get that color correct, it's hard to get the detail in, and I want to kind of improve that for my videos. So bear with me guys, I know some of you guys, you weren't criticizing, you were just commenting and letting me know that some stuff was getting a little fuzzy, and uh, yeah, definitely the whole YouTube game has moved on, the type of cameras people are using have moved on, so I do intend on addressing that. Now, I think that's kind of everything covered. We just, let's give away these clamps. Actually, one more thing before I give away the clams. Just wanted to ask your guys' opinion on some content that I'm planning, whether you guys want to see it or not. So I have some work, remedial works and stuff that I have to carry out on my house. I was thinking about maybe sharing that on this channel as well. It might interest you guys. So I want to improve the energy rating on the house. I have some dampness issues that I have to solve. I'm looking at uh, installing heat exchangers, things like that. So maybe solar panels down the road. I can share all that type of content too if that stuff interests you. It's kind of related to the whole DIY make or building things anyway, which is kind of what I do along with the woodworking in this workshop. So I can share all that information with you guys. I can make videos on all that if you guys would be interested in more DIY related content, stuff that you guys might do yourself. Now it'll be kind of, uh, they'll be kind of big enough projects, they'll be kind of advanced enough, but it is uh, possible for you guys to install some of this stuff yourselves. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm gonna try to put in some heating controls, some wireless heating controls, stuff to try and improve the energy rating of my house. It would be stuff that you guys could possibly install yourself because there's not too much wiring involved. So if you'd like to see that kind of content, let me know and I'll be sure to record it all. We have some stuff to do in the garden that is woodwork related. We have some greenhouses and more planters to build. So that'll be coming up as well. But uh, yeah, if DIY stuff on the house, 
um, trying to make our house more energy efficient and all that kind of work would interest you guys, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to record it and get it up on the channel. Now let's do the clams. Okay guys, let's get a competition winner picked here. I'm at my office desk and where I do all my editing. I'm sitting on a kitchen chair because I broke my office chair last night. I ended up sitting flat on my back. It was quite hilarious. Pity I didn't get it on video, but there you go. Anyway, we're on a website that picks random YouTube comments. So you just, it's just a case of enter the URL of the video click a couple of options, it gets all the comments from that video, and then you just hit pick random, and it selects a random winner. So that's what we're gonna to use to pick a winner for the clamps. So I get you guys a close up of the screen now, we'll enter the URL, we click a few options, and then we'll hit, let's find competition winner, and we'll see who's gonna win the clamps. Let's do it. Okay guys, we have a close up of the screen there. Hopefully you can all see what's going on. Just ignore all the advertisements and pop up ads, just as typical for these sites. So I'm just gonna paste in the URL for the video. I click filter duplicate user. So if everybody gets one entry, keeps nice and fair. And uh, the kind of whole deal was you had to comment, I need clamps so that I know that you would need clamps. So if we get a commenter that pops up and they haven't said, I need clamps, then we'll just hit pick again. Okay, let's do it. So we, if we click get YouTube comments, you can see it's finding the comments here. So we have 765 comments to pick from. So if we scroll down here, here is start raffle and pick random winner. So let's hit the start button. Best look everybody. Let's see who wins the clams. Neil Armour. So Neil says, congrats on the 30K from a fellow Irish woodworker. I need clams, don't we all? So there you go, Neil. Uh, congratulations, my friend. You have won those clams. So uh, yeah, be sure and pop me an email. I'll tell you what you need to do to claim the clamps. And uh, yeah, congratulations. And it goes, it looks like the clamps are gonna stay in Ireland. So there you go. At least that saves me on the postage, I suppose. But there you go, guys. Congratulations to Neil. And uh, yeah, there you go. So that's just a quick close up on it, guys. You can see it there. There's Neil, there's his comment. Uh, total names, 765. The date is the 27th of March, 21. It's 10.55 in the morning. So this video will be going up on this date later on this evening and we're on commonpicker.com and there you go everything nice and simple so congratulations again to neil hopefully you guys can see that and uh, happy days right so there we go congratulations to neil armor a fellow woodworking irish man so it looks like the clamps might be staying in ireland although i'm assuming that you're an irish man actually living in ireland irish people are all over the world these clamps could be heading to australia or america or anywhere um, i don't know that yet so neil what you need to do now is pop me an email on what I'll do, I'll give you a code word. You will go to that comment that you commented on that video. I get you to edit that comment, just add the code word to the end of that comment. That's how I'll know that it is actually you. Once we do that then, get me on your details. I will, I'll talk to you in the emails anyway, and I will get it sorted out and I get these shipped to you as fast as possible. And even better than the clamps themselves, I'll throw in some man shed stickers into the box so uh, yeah, you can really look forward to a few Manage Shed stickers, even better than the clamps. Now, you guys, if you're interested still in these clamps, I will link to them below. They're absolutely fantastic. And if you want me to do a review on them, I can absolutely do a review on them. Um, these ones were sent to me by Seller Shop, the ones that I'm gonna send on to Neil now. These ones I've bought with my own money, so I have no problem, or I have no um, conflict of interest or anything doing a review on these. If you guys want to know more about these clamps, I can do that video as well. So again, congratulations to Neil. Um, hard looks at everybody else, but I will uh, do more giveaways as this channel continues to grow. I definitely wanna try and do something to give back to everybody who watches these videos and get some of you guys started into making and woodworking as well, if I can do that. So if there's any potential sponsors out there watching these videos, if you wanna send me stuff that I can send to my audience, any kind of discount codes, anything like that that I can pass on to help the community out there, please do so. So there we go, guys. Um, again, congratulations to Neil, and I will definitely have some more giveaways coming up on the channel when we hit some more milestones. So there we go. Okay, guys, so there we go. That's workshop vlog complete, number 17, the 27th of March, uh, 2021. And congratulations once again to Neil Armour for winning the 30,000 subscribers clamps. And uh, I'm just about to hit 40,000 subscribers now. So, so since 
a month ago or about three or four weeks ago since I've made a 30,000 subscriber video. Uh, I've gained 10,000 subscribers in a month, which is absolutely mind boggling. Um, since I sent, sent out last year to gain 10,000 subscribers in a year was kind of my goal. To do it in a month is absolutely crazy. And um, it's just because one of my videos really took off my planters video. Everybody must be out in their garden and looking to make planters this time of the year. So the YouTube algorithm picked it up. Um, it's amazing how videos can do that. You can have a video, no views for six months and then it just explodes for some reason. So welcome to everybody. Thanks to all the existing subscribers. Thanks for all your comments, your supports. Thanks for helping this channel grow, guys. I really appreciate it. And it's nice to be able to give something back to you guys. And if you want to support what I do here, I have a Patreon. I've also got a PayPal set up now as well. So if you guys ever want to buy me a cup of coffee, my PayPal will be linked below as well. A massive thanks to all the guys over on Patreon for continuing to support this channel, guys. Really appreciate it. Nice little community over there that I get to chat with all the guys. So that's fantastic and thanks very much. So that's kind of it guys. Um, anything else? Oh, a van tour. <laughs> a question that I still keep getting from guys out there is uh, do a van tour. We want to see what's in your van. And I've put it off, put it off, put it off because there's not much in my van. I like to have a uh, travel light, but I've put a few shelves and stuff in it. So if you still really want to see my van that I use every day in my day job as an electrician, I will do the van tour. So let me know in the comments, do you want the van tour? Um, some of you seem to really want it and I will get that video up next maybe if I can. So that's it guys. I'm gonna get out of here again. Congratulations to Neil. Thanks for everybody, all the support. Fantastic to see the channel nearly hit 40,000 subscribers. And uh, that's it. I'm gonna get out of here now because I'm starting to ramble. Take it easy, guys. I shall see you in the next one.